Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, on your desk today, you will find a floor letter that, if it doesn't bother you, you might not be paying attention. Oregon's youth suicide rate is nearly twice the national average. It has been growing since 2010, which is not consistent with uh, the, the national average and national trends. This is a particular problem for our young men. Uh, boys and young men are four times more likely than girls and young women to take their own lives. We aren't sure why this is happening in Oregon. We aren't sure why we are losing so many kids. But what we do know is that every single time that it happens, it devastates whole swaths of communities. One of the other things that's troubling when we look at the information, this Oregon information, is that it's clear that we should be doing better. Among those who have completed a suicide, 65% of boys and 74% of girls that have taken their own lives had a, a diagnosed or mentioned mental health issue. Despite that, only 24% of the boys and 46% of the girls who took their own lives were able to access the mental health treatment that they needed. Access to services and support when individuals identify that they don't want to live anymore is an enormous problem in our state. My community has experienced a devastating suicide cluster that's lasted for over a year. We have lost far too many kids in Albany and Corvallis and Philomath in rapid succession. Already this session, we learned that at a middle school, there was a widespread suicide pact where middle schoolers were passing around a letter uh, talking about how they were going to join together to take their own lives. Last year, in one of the tragedies that we, that we talked about, that we learned about in our community, a young girl told her family that she didn't want to live. The family knew that she was in trouble. They tried to get help. She couldn't get in. The wait was very long for her to access mental health services. The family was told that if they were really concerned, they could call the police or take her to the emergency room. They called law enforcement. She was taken to the emergency room. At the emergency room, uh, it was confirmed that she was indeed suicidal and she needed help. She was released, uh, and the parents were told to follow up with treatment. When she had expressed that she didn't want to live anymore, she told her family that the way she would take her life was by stepping in front of a train. At her 16th birthday party, shortly after leaving the emergency room, she slipped out of her house and put herself in front of a train, just the way she had told her family that she would do that. We could have done better by this young woman, and we should do better by all of the youth in our state that are struggling with suicidal thoughts. Approximately 17% of Oregon 8th graders and 11th graders in Oregon reported that they have seriously considered taking their own lives over the course of the past year. And nearly 10% of 8th graders and 8% of 11th graders have reported attempting suicide one or more times in the previous 12 months. And while boys are more likely to complete a suicide, girls are more likely to have an unsuccessful attempt at suicide. In the 2014 session, we passed legislation to update our youth suicide prevention plan for the first time in over a decade. And we hired a statewide youth suicide and intervention coordinator. Senate Bill 561 comes out of one of the first recommendations of that. One of the things that we need is to be able to identify trends when they happen. And the entities that are most likely to know that a youth suicide has taken place in a community are those schools and colleges that hear about what is happening to their students. So Senate Bill 561 is very simple. It starts to create the process whereby once a school official becomes aware that there was a death that is a suspected suicide, it will be reported to the local mental health authority who can then contact the Oregon Health Authority and they can work to provide those needed and urgent postvention activities to make sure that other students don't follow suit. Senate Bill 561 is simple. It doesn't do a lot, but it will help us to gain more information so that we can help more kids. It is not acceptable that our youth suicide rate is twice the national average. It is not acceptable that the rate of young people taking their lives has increased every single year since 2010. It is not acceptable that it is so hard in this state to access mental health services, whether you are a young person or an adult. Senate Bill 561 gives us a chance to take a small step forward 
to gather more information so that we can start to address this issue and keep our kids safe. We need to do better for all of our children. Thank you, Mr. President.